This video has an urgent correction to some incorrect information I give you about wiring an e-stop for your hacked hoverboard device in video 3A. In that video, I suggested that interrupting the power to the hall sensors on either one of the two motors would cause the firmware to disable the motors and act as an e-stop. Now for reasons I haven't figured out yet, that doesn't work all the time. In fact, it seems to work when I first flash the firmware, or perhaps it's when there's a power cycle, and it works once or twice. And then after that, we get a different behavior, completely undesirable. So here's a pair of wires that I was interrupting to the hall sensors. And if I disconnect them, sometimes the motors will stop appropriately, where they just become disabled, and they can freewheel, and they're just not powered. Now that is a preferred behavior for an e-stop. Now apparently, Sometimes on subsequent attempts to use the Hall Interrupt method as an e-stop. Notice one motor stop, the other keeps moving. This motor isn't freewheeling, it's completely locked up. And it gets warm pretty quickly, as the driver still continues to drive it around. Now I initially started looking at the code to see if there was a fix for this, but this reminded me of a couple of very important things. For starters, e-stops, or emergency stops, need to be as dumb as possible. They need to be brute force and not really rely on any code. In this case, the code isn't software, it's in the firmware, but it doesn't matter. We can change this firmware and therefore it relies on us not making any errors. For that reason, I have to completely scrub the idea of using the hull sensors as an e-stop. It is unreliable. And even if I think I can fix it, it's inappropriate to use. Now, the other thing I need to correct is some terminology that I use. I need to be a lot more careful. E-stop stands for emergency stop. That means it's absolutely crucial, usually for safety involved, somebody's safety or the device could be damaged or property could be damaged. After a lot more digging into the hoverboard, the only real appropriate e-stop is to actually cut the power. Now, this gives us a little trouble. Given that each motor is limited in the firmware to 15 amps and our 36 volt batteries usually charge up to 42 volts, we're going to need to find a switch that can handle 30 amps at 50 volts probably. Now for the actual switch, this is probably doable. A remote e-stop, it's certainly possible, but you're going to have a hard time finding a relay that can handle that kind of current and DC voltage. When you find a contactor that can handle all that, it's probably going to be a little bit larger than we usually would like, but it's 100% the way to go. So for e-stops, cut the power. You need a switch that can handle 30 amps at 50 volts. If you can find a relay or contactor to do that, so you can also do that remotely, that is what I'm recommending for an emergency stop. Now with the e-stop talk out of the way, if your hoverboard control board is set up to only accept one of the two inputs and it's a serial connection, it can still be useful to interrupt the serial communications going to your board so you can temporarily disable the motors without shutting down the board. Again, not to be used as an emergency stop when safety is on the line. I hope you accept my apology for misleading you in the earlier video. I will probably add this information and re-release that video, but I'm also going to leave it up on its own because it's a very important topic. With this done, I will be right back with video 3B on how to set up your hoverboard for control with a joystick.